Hello, everyone. A good evening to every one of us that has joined. And as we wait for the other guys to join us, perhaps we can all introduce ourselves on the chat. Um, so, for example, how has your day been? And what do you look forward to from this webinar? By way of introduction, my name is Rispa Wanja Jage. I am working at Lapid Leaders Africa and with Lapid Leaders Africa as a growth associate. And I'm very excited to have all of you here. Today's webinar is on the topic rebirth, which is also our theme for the year at Lapid Leaders Africa. So our guest speaker today, who is the founder of Lapid Leaders Africa, will be elaborating on why that is the theme for the year, but also for you who is present. What does a rebirth look like? What, how do we make peace with one? Um, but for now, as other people join us, perhaps you can tell us once again. Um, first, to indicate that you're present with us, please send a hand emoji, uh, like an emoji just on your... Let me try mine. Yes. <laughs> I can see someone here, Dennis Karafa. Yes. You can also thank you, Naomi. Please indicate that you're here by sharing an emoji. Barbara is here. Naomi is here. Um, TTW is also here. Grace is here. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Please indicate using an emoji to show us that you are here for the webinar. Joseph Karanja sends a hands up emoji. Thank you very much. Um, Joy is here. Dorcas Nyokabi to everyone. Hi, Dorcas. Thank you so much. So, as our guest, just joins the meeting. Before she joins the meeting, we have a very interesting question for you today. Can you, uh, oh my gosh. Thank you, Can you, for being here. I'm so, so excited to see you. Uh, Meryn, Jerry, the Swans, I'm happy to see you. We need Jeb, Jebet Kipteram, I think from Kerry. Thank you so much for being here. Jay Mwamba, Ian Kimani, Dorcas Nyokabi times two, uh, Janice Kirini, Karibu Sana Janice, um, Joseph Karanja, welcome, Eric Maina, Karibu Sana, Nicolas Wekesa, we are so, so happy to have you tonight. Um, let me see, whose name have I not seen? Okay, Dennis Karafa, I see you. Uh, welcome here. Lapid Leaders Africa. We would love to see you guys by this. So if you are at a place where you can and physical, um, like switch on your camera, we would love, love, love to see you, just to see the faces that are here with us. Hello, my name is Winnie Kipteram. So uh, as today topic suggests, I'm so much expectant. Okay, awesome. I love that you are expectant and keep putting any expectations that you have on the chat, just so that if we do not meet your goals for today, uh, then perhaps you can consider doing a follow-up webinar just for your sake. But we are very happy to have you. Um, perhaps I could ask someone I see who I know to say hi, but only if the host allows him to say hi. Dennis Karaba, are you able to say hi to all of us that are present? Hi, Rispa. How are you? Thank you I'm so much very... for inviting me to say hi. I would have really loved to see most, if not all of us, uh, but I can see some familiar names on my screen. Pascal, yeah. hello. Uh, good to see you. Um, I can see Barbara Nyango. If, if Barbara, you're the one we met uh, a while back, been through Lapid, then really good to see you. Zablon, always a pleasure. Uh, Mary and Jerry, um, your earlier 
very injurious one. So that means we've interacted and a pleasure to be here. Uh, Mwamba, if this is Jay Mwamba, it's been a while. Really good to see you. I'm so grateful to be here. This is a good opportunity. I'm eager to learn about how I can reinvent myself this year. Um, yesterday, I was just going through some of uh, my goals uh, that I've set for myself. And a big part of it uh, was I need, rather, the habits and the processes that got me to where I am are not, are not the ones that are going to get me to the next level. So I am also in this session to learn uh, about how I can reinvent myself, what the process looks like um, for a rebirth. Uh, I remember one of the captions in the post as we were circulating information about this uh, webinar was, you know, how an eagle uh, plucks its own feathers, it uh, breaks its own beak, and it sounds like a very painful process. Mm. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> the, the eagle understands that this is for the best. I will mm. hunt better. I will, I will be a fresher self. Uh, moving forward. So I believe that is also something synonymous to the rebirth process of a human being. Uh, but I'm also just eager to see whether that is still the case and what that looks like for us, uh, rather for me, and um, even for the people here within the call. Hopefully that is a question that will, will be answered for all of us. Thank yeah. you once again. Mm -hmm. Willing one to hug. I can see the speaker is in. Over to you, Rispa. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Karafa. And everyone who is here with us already, thank you. I can see new names like Zablon, Ogenda, Keshi, uh, Mirinjeri. Yes, but if you had invited anyone, you can also send them just a reminder that we have already started and we really would want them to benefit from today's webinar. So I have shared a question for us in the in the chat if you had a superpower to solve your most immediate needs right now what superpower would that be let's go you can text in the chat as i told you guys when we began uh because of the numbers that we have we will not be able to allow everyone to talk um just because it can easily become disorderly but text in the chat if you had a superpower, what superpower would it be? And why would you pick that superpower? So for the sake of the fact that only a few people can admit, I would wish to read people's mind. <laughs> oh, joy, why? Why would you want to read other people's mind? What if you read things you don't want to see there? Uh, please let's keep sharing. Joy, by the way, if you're able to, um, you can tell us why you want that. Hey, Naomi Mutai, ability to create money out of anything. I feel you. I would become professor from that money heist. But even though professor is too, but yes, close to professor, that would be my superpower. I would want to learn how to create money out of everything. Although I think my most immediate need right now, I would love to, to be able to clone myself. I can't remember where I saw people uh, cloning themselves. But yeah, I would have so many mini needs and then they can just do everything that's due for me, execute all the ideas in my head, but also do my work. Um, Okay, I love I love what I'm seeing. I would uh, I would like to have healing power so that I could take people out of pain. Oh, that's amazing! Thank you so much, Weekly, for sharing that. I think that's a very noble desire. Okay, I hope we can get these superpowers one day. TTW, who's TTW by the no no two. Um, but to stop being so scared of going big. Oh, can you, oh, can you the one by TTW? Oh, I get you, I get you. To stop being so scared of going big. Ha, ah, I can understand that a lot. Oh my goodness. I can only imagine, like it's very, it's very scary, especially to try new things, let alone to go big. So and understand the need for that superpower. Hopefully by the time we are ending this 
webinar, all of us can have gotten a little bit more push, more courage to go big. Um, please keep sharing. What would your superpower be? Like to solve your most immediate need right now, if you were to pick a superpower, which one would it be? Um, I would love to see more of us, what we think. Karafa, now that you're here and I can bully you a bit because you can unmute your mic, what superpower would solve your most immediate need right now? Okay. The ability to, to see into the future. I think uh, that that will uh, will solve most of the things that I'm currently handling, mm -hmm. particularly the outlook of if I make this decision now, how will it look like in the future, and yeah. enable me now to to make the right decisions. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I think that, that that will be it. I was really considering flying. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to be up in the air with that kind of wind. So yeah, I will I will go for picking into the future. Yeah. Mm, okay. I I totally understand that. Uh, so maybe Felix, so one day you're asking superpower in terms of exactly that's the point. You want to see if you are to pick a superpower right now, just for yourself, you know, so you have from what ever range of superpowers exist or that don't even exist. What superpower would help you solve your most immediate need right now? Felix, I hope that helps you uh, answer your question. Yeah, so superpower, this one is purely for you. If you were to speak a superpower right now that can help you solve your most immediate need, what superpower would you pick? I see that Nawire is saying the ability to see the future, I wish uh, to see your death date. Ah, <laughs> okay, now we let, I see you. Why do you want to know when you will die? Like, <laughs> eh. okay, I get that. Do I really get it? I may not, but I, hmm, I'm curious to see why. If you can text in the chats again, why would you want to see, uh, to see your death date? I'm very curious by this to see uh, why that would be the case. And hey, my goodness, I was asking Karafa. Uh, so as you'd wish to see your death date, I don't know. Oh, you're asking Karafa. I see that. Hey, Karafa, you have questions to answer. Why do you want to see your death date? I don't remember you saying that. But hey, hey why would you want to see your death date? I guess I guess this will be a, a conversation of um, mm. the the burden of responsibility, so to say. Mm -hmm. So you mm. can you have to take both the risk and and the reward. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I think it will be interesting to know my exact death date, mm -hmm. uh, but also it's a, a shift of perspective. So that's just one of the things I could see. Mm. Yeah, there's so much I can do before then. Yeah. Um, and I like to take that approach in life as well. So mm. it's half glass or half, I mean, half full or half empty kind of situation. And we we always have to understand there's always a reward and there's an the opportunity, there's a risk to, to every situation. So mm. you can't have one and leave the other on the table. Mm. It's charging on with both in mind. Ah, all right. Thank you so much, Karafa, for sharing that. Huh. I need to see you on the side. This courage you have for glass half full, glass half empty. I applaud that. Um, I think right now, oh, I see Winnie Jabet has texted. I would be a CEO in a water-related company. And in that case, I will be of impact to the society. Hmm. See, deep, deep dreams. <laughs> Please, we need 
we need the courage. Yes, Kanye, I see. Me, I agree with you. We need this courage for wanting to see in the future, indeed. So for everyone that is just joining us right now, the question we are dealing with is, if you were to have a superpower that can help you solve your most immediate need right now, what superpower would that be and why? So text that in the chat. We would really love to see your responses. Our guest speaker will be starting her address in a few, uh, but perhaps in the meantime, I see new faces or rather new names. I see Leslie, Alphas, Karibu Sana. I see Betty, that's the Betty I think I know, Betty, Karibu Sana. That might or might not be my high school desk mate. So it's very special to see people present here. Masindaiga, Karibu Sana, Fabiola, uh, Christine Gishira, Frida, Masese, Karibu Sana, Chalo, Calvin says, we are so, so happy to have you. And so, as you guys continue to text in, if you had a superpower that can help you solve your most immediate need right now, what superpower would that be? And why would that be a superpower? Um, so we would love to see that in the chat. But in the meantime, so some of you could be wondering, so who are these Lab Feed Leaders Africa people that are calling us for a webinar? What's the goal of this webinar? Who will be the speaker? What can I expect by the end of this session? So I will answer that question for you. But perhaps before I answer, let me read one last reply. Caroline Gashero says, I would like the superpower of speed. I had a lot to handle and all require haste and my immediate attention. So fast speed it is. Ha, me, I understand you. I would want to clone myself and then <laughs> All my clones have a lot of speed of executing things. Ability to control the African economy. Mm. Preach, Felix, sir. I also, I get you. Also, to be able to elongate life, too good. Uh, we should live more. Okay. okay. So, I love all these answers. We want to live more. If we finish this one, maybe, you know, we hear there are so many philosophies and ideas of when is when is the second return of Jesus or whatever your beliefs are? Kanye, if you want to live longer, may the Lord grant you this prayer, you know? But for now, by the way, guys, I think I had informed you, we are live on our LinkedIn and we would like to shout out to everyone that is joining us on LinkedIn Live. We would like to give a shout out to King Karaoke, whose superpower would be to make the right decisions every single time. Shout out to you. Martha Kuria, Beatrice Mbibe, and Charles Mutumba. We are so happy to have you guys. Please feel free to share your comments or any questions that you may have with us, and we shall be happy to answer any and all questions that you have. So on to what I had said I'll share with you guys. So who is Lapid Leaders Africa? I think I would summarize who Lapid Leaders Africa is as an organization first, a nonprofit, but secondly, it's a program on training and development of young and upcoming African change makers, just so that you can get ready. How we do this, it's by training, mentoring, giving you access to the right community, giving you access to the right kind of coaches. So we do this in different levels, depending on what part of our program you're taking. Uh, with Lead Self, you will get trained, mentored, method and coach just around self-awareness discovering your own purpose and you know reporting to the world in full power of the authority of who you know yourself as when we get to the lead marketplace pillar we get you ready by training mentoring and coaching on market marketplace preparedness that is for someone who's going into a job so someone that wants to perhaps innovate within their own jobs or for people who want to understand what their work identity is we pair you up with a career coach just so that you can figure out are you in the right career or if you were to navigate a change how would that look like how do you scale up where you are and then at the lead africa pillar we look at entrepreneurship and intrapreneurship 
entrepreneurship is for people who want to build their own businesses and in intrapreneurship it's for people who want to build within their own uh, build within the companies where they are already working so that's just a summary of one of our main programs which is the lapid uh, flagship program that one mainly targets people who are just joining the workplace and people who just, you know, they've been in the workplace probably for maximum three years. And then people who are still in campus just so that you can get the skills to be able to stand out amongst all other graduates who are coming into the marketplace every single year. And then we also have another program for professionals that is for people who, who are looking at going into management, or who now want to change jobs completely because they've already had work experience and they have figured maybe the space they would like to navigate into. That program is called Crossroads Program. That's for professionals who, who've been in the marketplace for at least five years, and now they're just looking to either scale up or change, change careers, or they're considering doing a master's, but they are yet to even identify where they want to go. So Lapid Leaders Africa will be the place for you. I will be sharing the link to our website just in the course of this webinar so that you can get more details about us. And if you would like to you know, get into any of our programs, there's a link on how to apply or how you can reach out to us with any questions that you may have. So that, I would say, is a summary of who we are as at Lapid Leaders. Africa, maybe something else I can mention is that we, I think I would consider us dreamers. Dreamers in the sense that we believe in a better Africa. We believe in a better, you know, in a better continent. We believe in an Africa of people who are empowered, whose minds are decolonized enough to believe first that they are the solution providers that the continent is waiting for, but also that no one, no one at all is coming to save us. So if we are to get anything going in Africa, from businesses to government, to the companies that are being built here, to even unexplored areas of business, we are the people to do it. And in Lapid Leaders Africa, we believe in partnering with you, fellow dreamers, you know, to just get you ready for that journey and also walk with you because the network that you get access to through Lapid Leaders Africa has people who are building from both within here and outside of Africa. So we believe that you are in the right place. Uh, thank you to my colleagues at Lapid Leaders Africa. The link to our website has just been shared so you can find out more about us there. Now, I would like to welcome so far everyone who's here and everyone who's yet just joining us, Karibu Sana. Feel free, feel welcome to Lapid Leaders Africa. Feel free to also share any expectations that you may have from this webinar, just so that maybe our guest speaker can have that in mind. For now, maybe I would like to encourage all of us who are here. Please, once again, share your, share your expectations. And now to introduce our guest speaker for the day. Our guest speaker for today is Esther Moniki. She is the founder and CEO of Lapid Leaders Africa. Esther has been working in the finance space way before she started her journey as a founder in Lap of Lapid Leaders Africa. She used to work as a professional in senior management at PwC. That's PricewaterhouseCoopers and later with Guarantee Trust Bank, both within Kenya and Africa and outside of Africa. And then in 2014, toward the start of 2015, she, you know, just out of following her calling and her belief in the continent, she joined, she left her formal employment to start Lapid Leaders Africa. And now about you know, eight years later, nine years later, Lapid Leaders Africa has had more than 3,000 applications coming to us. We've had now over 1,000 people have now graduated from Lapid Leaders Africa in different levels. 
there have been more than 30 businesses started by Lapidas within Lapid or even outside of Lapid. We have also partnered with more than 15 different organizations now, all who have been critical in helping us to uh, like subsidize the cost of our programs. But all in all, it's that a lot of opportunities have opened up out of someone who answered the call of courage to reinvent herself and build and be reborn into a new identity that can handle now the work that is being done, which is in the space of civil innovation for civic innovation rather for young people within Africa and generally out of love for the continent of Africa. Esther Moniki, we welcome you to this session. Um, maybe as she unmutes and gets ready, something I should have mentioned, Esther is also a holder of an executive master's in public service from the University of New York. She's an Obama fellow and she's also a fellow of the Oprah Winfrey Foundation, just out of the work that she has done through Lapid Leaders Africa. So with that said, I would say to each and every one of us, keep your eyes and your ears ready for the presentation that we are going to have. Pose any questions you may have on the chat. And once again, Karibuni Sana to welcome uh, Karibuni Sana to Lapid Leaders Africa and to Esther, welcome. All right, as she unmutes once again, keep, feel free to share your expectations for today, what you would want this webinar or even future webinars to help you with. I loved. Um, some of the things you have seen that I would choose teleportation, visit home and countries of my choice, travel back to the past, see extinct homo eh, hominids, okay, and then deal with imposter syndrome and be able to get a good and fulfilling job. At least, Esther, you can see the superpowers that people want here. Others would love to see themselves as big as I know they are inside, but for some reason, it's it's scary to go big, it's scary to be courageous. Um, how do we see ourselves and not small? Hopefully that this webinar can also help us answer some of those questions. Kari Busana. Thank you, Rispa. Um, it's nice to see all of you. Um, thank you for joining us for this conversation. Um, as Rispa said, my name is Esther Moniki. I just wanted to start by saying a big thank you to RISPA for hosting this session. We literally came back from Thika a few minutes ago. Um, so if my red eyes look red, it's because they probably need an hour of water. Um, but I just thought uh, my idea was to postpone this, but their team's idea was let's do this. So I just wanted to ask to start by celebrating RISPA for hosting this session and Karafa for supporting her. Um, it takes quite a bit of time and effort for us to be able to put these things together. And so before even I start the session, I just really appreciate it if you all would um, celebrate the team. You can do that with an emoji. You can do that by unmuting yourself, but let's just celebrate them because I know the time and effort that it takes to put this together. Um, we have quite a bit going on at the moment. And so it's not the easiest thing to put this together. So thank you, Rispa. Thank you, Karafa. Thank you um, to the team behind the scenes that sort of just rallying people to join in. And thank you to everyone who has joined us for this conversation. This is our first webinar for the year. Um, it's probably fitting that we must have had it in January. Otherwise, if we didn't do it in January, we would struggle to do another one in February. We want to try and do this. Um, there's a lot going on. And so even when we say we will try, it's harder than I can even explain, but we are here. Um, so today we want to talk about the rebirth. Um, and I think Rispa had a bit of slides that she's prepared that I can't even seem to locate. Um, that's how bad it is. And so I will perhaps do a few things and then I will allow her to lead me through the um, slides or through a QA. and a the, I wanted to set a few things just to say why we, are, we chose the theme rebirth. 
but even perhaps more importantly, what rebirth means uh, for you as an individual. And I like where Karafa started that conversation. I could hear it from the back end. I think one of the best examples of a rebirth is the egos. And so the egos are said that they go through a rebirth every 40 years. And so they live 40 years they have this process where they go through a rebirth. If they go through that rebirth successfully, they have another 30 years. And so generally a rebirthed ego has a 70 year lifespan. An ego that doesn't go through the rebirth tends to have 40 and less years uh, lifespan. And that speaks to the power of rebirth and reinvention. Um, if you think about some of the innovations that haven't survived to date, the Kodak is one that everybody uses in an MBA class. Kodak was a fantastic brand. Oh, or if you ask me, use Nokia or oh, Motorola. Some people could argue that those are not really dead. Maybe they still are in existence. Let me talk about that Nokia 3310. It's a one, the, my first phone um, was a Nokia 3310, God knows what year. But each of those organizations, if you look at the heart of why they disappeared, let's use Kodak, it's that they didn't reinvent themselves. If you look at the digital media today, there is a run towards how do we reinvent media because if we don't reinvent media then you're going to have a problem and so reinvention is a big part of the cycle of life um and so the egos go through it in an interesting way egos have a big a, a big beak and they must beat the beak on the on a ground until that beak dies and they must eat out all the feather until they don't have that feather and it's said to be a very painful process but that process allows, 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 allows the ego to reinvent itself. And so it has new feathers, it has new beak, and the old is gone and the new comes and there's room for the new. And so that's what the process of rebirth looks like. For many people, this looks like a new theme, but actually our themes tend to build up on each other. In 2020, we went through a rebrand and the theme for it was around reimagining the possible. We believe that the next 10 years, our big mission is around reimagining the possible as an organization, but also as a continent. And so 2020, our theme was reimagining the possible. 2021, the theme was courage is calling. And what that was built on was the fact that you cannot reimagine the possible without courage. Courage is what allows you to let go of the old beak. Courage is what allows you to let go of the feathers in a painful process. And so the theme for last year was courage is calling. And so then imagine courage and then rebirth. And the difference between reimagine and rebirth is you cannot rebirth what you can't imagine. I like what um, Rispa talked about earlier that we consider ourselves dreamers. And the spaces where people fear dreaming Actually, within the Lapid Leaders experience, one of the bigger things we talk about is imagination. Because if you don't train yourself to be imaginative, you cannot build anything. There is an extent to which we all are running to rebuild organizations, to rebuild ourselves. But at the heart of rebuilding anything fast has to be imagination. And so that's why in 2020, we went through a process of imagination. You must add a double dose of courage in that imagination to then reinvent and rebuild. I, I will need to pick that up. So you will give me a minute um, to do that. And Rispa, you will pick up from there and just share thoughts around what people are hearing. All right. Thank you so much, Esther. It's, I'm always amazed at how much you're able to give over and over and over again. Um, maybe I can read some of the comments that we have on, on the chat. Oh, so this actually means if we keep evolving, we tend to live longer, amazing. When can we see the old webinars? Ah, <laughs> so this is sort of exclusive. Um, now that you, you'll be, You'll be a member of this webinars because we would love to do them a series just to keep observing how each month, where is it taking us? How is it different from where we started? Yes, we've done a few previous webinars on the themes that we pick for every, dip, uh, every year. There are a few that can be found on our YouTube channel that is Atlapid Leaders Africa. We do have other episodes on our LinkedIn, but those ones are about a different show that has still been done by Lapid Leaders Africa. But for now, Kanye, to answer your question, you can find a lot of our own content on our website and on our YouTube channel. 
then uh, so for now, you guys, from what our CEO has shared on what Arribas is and why we have and why we have this different this different things for every single year. What would you say for you, Rebus, will represent this year? Be as general or as specific as you can, um, but we would really, really love to hear from you. From what Esther has shared, what are you hearing? What would you want your Rebus to produce for you this particular year? Yes, in the meantime, I have shared the link to our YouTube channel on the on the chat. So Kanye and anyone else who may be asking, you can find more information about us there. So once again, what are you hearing from what our CEO has shared? Mm. Thank you, Whisper. Yeah, that's a good okay. question, Rispa, and I want this to be highly interactive so that I don't just keep moving. I think I've done a bit of an introduction on why our theme is rebirth, um, and to be great to hear from one or two people, maybe you could start us off, Rispa, what's standing out for you as we talk about that rebirth, and one more person can then uh, step in. I think I've just set the foundation for why rebirth. I've talked about well, history with this theme. I've also talked about why this theme, and I've also given the example of an ego as sort of setting the pace for the theme. Perhaps, Rispa, it would be useful to hear from you one or two things that stood out for you in that introduction, and maybe hear from one person, and then we move forward. All right. Thank you so much for that question. I would say what has stood out from, for me from what you have just shared is <laughs> the power of process. You know, there's a there's a time as we've been preparing for this webinar. I thought, oh, you know, rebirth sounds so nice when when someone hears it, they might think, oh, this guy is no just the right phrases to come up with. But when you look really at it, what it would mean to be reborn again, like the story of the ego, it's actually the least romantic thing ever. But it seems like that is what you would need to go through if you're to become a different person. Uh, maybe something that I personally have been reflecting on is the nature of relationships I can have, even just with my normal friends, versus what I need to have now as I'm scaling up as a professional. People who have always seen me in the same light, but now I am reinvented, I'm born again, um, a different person. How? How do I navigate them to seeing this, the new person that I'm becoming, but also how do I not get stuck in the old, out of the ones, oh no, just for you, we knew you as this, we knew you as this, but I wasn't always going to be what you have always known. So how do we navigate that? Uh, I think that is something I'm really looking forward, even just to hearing when, you, when you're navigating a river what are some losses you might have to be open to to going through and also just so how do we stick with the process of a rebirth because clearly mm. it's not it's not sweet or romantic as we might think so how mm -hmm. how do you stay on track still and those are good questions and you will keep me on track with those questions you say two things that i think are important you've asked the process of rebirth is your changing and how do you manage the change process in such a way especially with regard to relationships but generally I think with regard to yourself and uh, how do you stick with the process how do you manage your relationships but also how do you stick with the process so just uh, perhaps I know those two and we'll come back to them because I think those are important questions but something else that's standing out for me as you're speaking is just to highlight that the rebirth sounds optional, but the rebirth is not optional. The Kodak had a moment where they had to make a choice. Do we want to go through rebirth or do we want to die? Um, uh, the egos have a moment where they have to go through a choice, but it's really not a choice. It's a choice, but it's not a choice. It's either you do it or you become extinct. And so though, Reason that's an important point to pick as we think about the rebirth because I think because of the process and the pain, perhaps it's it's easy to imagine that it's optional. In truth, it's like growing up. 
Mm. We grow up, whether we like it or not. I like, um, some people don't like him, but I like Jordan Peterson. I consider him one of those philosophers that everybody should follow. Mm -hmm. And one of the lessons he talks about is the Peter Pan syndrome. And the Peter Pan syndrome is about how some people get stuck in being a child. And he talks about how the, one of the bigger tragedies of life is being in your 30s, your 40s, but you're still a child. And I think for me, that's the mindset you have to have as a rebirth that it may be a painful process, it may be a necessary, but more important is that it's a necessary part of life. And secondly, that you have the capacity for it. Call a transition ceremony where people at the end of one pillar transition to the next uh, ceremony or transition to the next pillar. And as part of that, we have what we call rites of passages and they're built around what happens in the African society. So when a child is moving from child to adulthood, there was actually specific rites of passage that people needed to go through. And as we lose a lot of the African traditional society kind of practices, we then lose the value of those rites of passages. Part of the reason we had those rites of passages and why they are part of our transition ceremony is they reminded the person you will be fine when you grow older. So a young man goes through these rites of passage, it's painful. And you could argue that they don't have to do it, but they have to reinvent themselves. And hopefully that, what that teaches them later on, if I survive that, I will survive this. A woman goes through a, re, a rites of passage by body, whether they like it or not. And they have to reinvent themselves from a child to a grown up. But what that does for that girl to a woman is over time it reminds them if I survived that, I can survive many other things. And so that's something that we are trying to bring back within the programs, but it's equally important for any individual who's going through a rebirth. You have to go through those rites of passages. They allow you to let go of the past, mourn the past, be sad about the past. I mean, when you think about another rites of passage, marriage, and before people go into a marriage, there's this whole uh, process where women go through, men go through, but part of it is to mourn your singlehood. I mean, we do a lot of practices without thinking about them, but it's to mourn and to be able to embrace the next. And so when you're thinking about a rebirth, just to highlight what you are talking about, um, RISPA one, remember it's not optional. I mean, it looks optional, but it's not. Secondly, you have what it takes to be able to manage it, um, that there are things that you've gone through in your life that have prepared you for your rebirth. And those two things are very important as you think about rebirth. So allow me to just move and talk about a few more th things and then come back to RISPA and hear what you're hearing. So maybe even before I talk about what I wanted to spend a bit more time on, just to say, you have to think about, let's do ground zero. What's a rebirth? And there are many definitions for it and the egos give us a good picture for it but I think for me when I think about rebirth there are two words that come to my mind it's maturity and mastery and it's rebirth calls people to mature it calls people to say I was young but I'm now old and what are the things I need to set aside as a child to a grown person I, and I say that as a person who's going through various rebirths my most recent rebirth was I had to wake up, leave the country and go to New York and worked in New York for a, about one year plus. Um, and before that, I was in and out of the country. And in many ways, I had to go through a reinvention. The person who was here cannot be the person in New York. Let me give you an easy example. My English, my accent here wouldn't work in New York. It would be great if it did. They need to watch African movies because we watch um, Hollywood and we catch their accent with ease. But when you move to a lot of these countries, you realize actually your tongue is very different from their tongue. And if you want people to hear you, you must figure out how to play around with your tongue. And I didn't learn it fully, but it was a necessary part of the reinvention. Um, you find the weather here is extremely deep different from the weather there they have this thing called winter that feels like a punishment and I like to survive this winter i buy many jackets you learn to use the weather um you don't leave your house without checking the weather you have to go through the process and so that was a recent rebirth 
And even moving from New York to come back, and I still am very much in a very transitionary kind of uh, mindset, but that also required a whole set of rebirth to the part of the reason why you hear when people move from America to here and they talk badly about us is just they don't go through that rebirth. Um, in truth, Kenya is not America and should it be. We have the things that work for us. We have the things that we need to fix. But that process of rebirth allows people to be able to survive. And so when I think about rebirth, for me, what comes to mind is mastery and maturity. The maturity to be able to say, when I was a child, I stuck with my tongue. But when I became a mature person, I started to learn how to communicate so that people hear me. And I promise you, I can fight. And I have done it. I worked in the UK at some point and part of my nightmares with the UK experience is I refused to adjust my tongue and you quickly realize that you either mature or you mature. And so maturity is a big part of the rebirth. It's part of that process of unplugging. I'm a born again Christian, love the Bible. And one of the other examples that I use is the story of Moses. Moses goes through a rebirth. There's a Moses who is a child and is born in um, the privilege that's called be growing up under pharaohs and the king's palace. And then somewhere along the way, he's kicked out and he goes into the wilderness. But he comes back and he comes back in what is a rebirth, but he has to have matured. And that maturity has to have gone through is what he's going through as he goes through the wilderness. And so I think for me, one of the bigger things that comes to mind as I think about a rebirth is you have to accept that a big part of rebirth is maturity. And let, letting go of your idealism, because that's a big part of child. Um, we have a whole module in Lapid where we talk about leadership is not for children. And as part of that, we name some things that children do. And we allow ourselves to let go of those childish things, because there's no rebirth without maturity. But the other part of that, as you mature, you identify the spaces that you're good at. You identify the gaps that you have, and therefore then that moves you towards mastery. Now, when you're a child, people do mastery for you. When you're a grown leader, you're the one to do the mastery for yourself. And so you ask, what does it look like for me to learn how to wing this tongue? And you go to YouTube and you talk to people and you figure out how do I communicate in a way people in this land hear me? Now, a child gets stuck in, you guys must hear me because I hear you guys because I watch Hollywood. Child, through the tantrums and then at some point, maturity has to hit in. And then when maturity hits in, now mastery starts. And so the process of rebirth must have those two, maturity and mastery. Now, people fight with maturity and because they fight with with maturity, they're not able to transition to the mastery phase. Now, when you think about mastery, mastery has um, many aspects, and that could be a whole conversation. What and in mastery? What is productivity? Um, you cannot be a master. Actually, one is not productivity. One is just self awareness and awareness of I'm good at. I'm not good at, I need to work on, I need to do XXS. And it's the I part that's important. There's a, there's a book called Mastering Leadership that I love. And it talks about if anything is flawed in the earth, in your organization, when you are a child, or when you step into the space of maturity, you realize if it is broken, I am at fault. And that takes quite a bit of maturity um, because then you will have to learn how to manage yourself. But that's the first part of mastery self-awareness, to be able to name I'm good at, I'm not good at. And I'm good at, you elevate it. I'm not good at, you ask, must I be good at it? Or can I get other people to be good at it? If I must be good at it, what does it look like for me to be good at it? And so the first part of any re, uh, mastery process is self-awareness. And that's a whole journey. Um, and just 
being open enough to understand yourself, but also part of it is also sitting under people. That's the value of mentorship. That's the value of coaching because it helps you to see um, yourself. There's that whole concept. There's a concept I think called Johari's window and talks about the four areas, what you know, what other people know and what they can show you and what you can show yourself. And so that's a Johari's window, but that's a process around self-awareness. There's a part of mastery is productivity. You cannot be a master if you don't learn how to master your time. Um, one of the big things about life is realizing that the gift of life is time. And as you're doing a mastery of time, you also learn that the bigger job is actually not mastering time, it's mastering your energy. If you don't master your energy, that becomes a big problem. And there are many things that you can do to master your energy. Um, part of them is self-awareness and but also part of them is just learning to name your emotions and so there's a whole conversation around productivity I, I won't go into it obviously because if I did all these things it would take me like a hundred years um but let me just see one thing that's important in, but anyway I, I it wasn't my intention to, to go into that but I think for me, when you think about productivity, you have to think about T framework that helps you with um, productivity. And in that T framework, you talk about um, time, you talk about energy, and you talk about attention. And the question that you ask is, where am I putting my time? Where am I putting my energy? Where am I putting my attention? And part of my and becoming productive is managing those three things. Learning what needs your biggest of your time learning what takes away your energy and asking if that's the right place for your energy to be taken and then learning to manage what is in your attention and there's a whole conversation that we can have around that but I would another part of um, mastering your time is learning to do reverse engineering reverse engineering says this is my goal my goal is a nice dream but if I don't learn how to break down dreams into specific things that I do then it remains just that. I mean, there's a whole pill actually that we spend quite a bit of time on that, that talks about how do we reverse engineer, how do you use the T framework to be able to build your productivity. So mastery is the point I'm talking about. And I'm saying that in mastery, you start with self-awareness. Secondly, you manage your productivity. Third thing, which is where I will sort of spend more time on is clarity of vision and being aligned. And I wanna pause there before. Before I go to that last point. Rispa, what are you hearing? Uh, Esther, thank you so much for that. Actually, before I share what I'm hearing, I would love to maybe just read a few questions that will be coming for you. We have Charles Mogoba from LinkedIn. He's asking what's the difference between rebirth and reinvention. I think you can tackle that as, as we go on. Another, another comment that I have seen here, I think these are people's reflections on what they're hearing so far, that there's a way you can wire your brain to accept the pain by hoping the days after will be better than the current. That's just for when we were talking about, you know, rebirth. It's not romantic. So how, how do you encourage yourself? Um, the, then there's someone Alexa, else. can I just say something? I don't yeah. know though ability to go through a rebirth is the capacity to be honest with yourself. Um, there's a course called, I did a while back, actually not too far ago, it's called Leadership Confronted. Um, but it talks about the power of confronting yourself. Mm -hmm. You cannot go through a rebirth if you don't confront yourself and confront your truths and confront your challenges. Um, and still also be able to celebrate mm -hmm. the things that you do well and balance those two. Um, some people are very good at confronting, but they're not able to celebrate. Mm. And what that does is it becomes an energy management gap. Um, and so manage the confrontation, but also the celebration. Mm. On the other hand, there are people who are very good at celebrating themselves, but they don't have the capacity to confront the things that they need to confront. Um, there's a whole story. If you know about... Um, Jim Collins, he's written a fantastic book, Good to Great. And he gives the example of these guys who were in the Jewish, they were captured 
and most people died, but there's a guy who survived yeah. Stockholm syndrome is what he talks about. And he says that the reason he survived because he was done a whole interview. Why did you survive? Everybody else died. And he said, it's because I was both positive and negative. I confronted and I celebrated. And so marrying both is important in the rebirth process. It allows people to be able to survive the pain. But I'll also talk about one more last thing. Okay, so yes. I think, thank you so much for that. Personally, what I have heard so far, um, I love that you say that rebirths are not optional. I think that's, <laughs> that is something probably in my mind I would have thought, you know what, can we skip, can we skip to the good parts, you know, can I skip to the parts where all my dreams have been fulfilled and I didn't have to worry through all the sweats in between. Uh, for example, there's, um, there's someone who's present who had shared, allow me to read it again, um, that change and constant reinvention is a necessary part of life. That was from Hope Miriti. And I think this is, this is a person who's really caught it, that at no point is a rebirth and reinvention going to be necessary, like it's not going to be optional at any point. So the earlier we accept, the earlier I as Rispa, you know the way you say that if there's anything wrong in this world, chances are 99%. I am the person that needs to change. I'm the one that needs to be fixed. If anything needs fixing, because the world for the most part will always depend on how ready we are to report to the world. Um, maybe as we continue, let me share... I'm looking for something that had been shared um, by someone here. Maybe you can address that. I feel like you've touched on it a bit. It's someone who said, so how do I see myself as big enough and yet I feel small inside? Like, how do you, how do you change that mind? And how can a rebirth perhaps help someone break out of a level of I don't want to say, maybe it's fear. It has been there for too long, but now I need to be reinvented. Maybe it's time I need to be a business owner or I need to execute projects that require a lot of courage. How, how do I do that? Mm. Um, so let me first answer the first question that you asked about um, rebirth and reinvention. Reinvention yes. is the output, rebirth is a process. So you go through a rebirth and the process, then you come up as a reinvented person. And so both tend to go together. Um, rebirth is the process. Reinvention is the output of that process. Um, the question you asked right now, because Baba Nita is asked, how? What did you say? I forgot you it's already gone. Oh, no, the question was, so it's someone who's saying, I feel small, but I also know I am not. It's, I don't know how to get out of it. There's a lot of work calling and to them and to their particular person, but they need that mind shift and they would like help. So how do you how do you get out of that mind shift to really truly how you see yourself and be able to translate that to mm. the world? I think there are many things to that. Um, one is understanding why you feel small and we do that this quite a bit within that it we talk about that if you're going to change anything you must understand the why behind it mm -hmm. and so the bigger part of it is understanding the why and doing the work behind the why mm -hmm. I, I remember there's a time I struggled with visibility I'm very good at being a number two extremely um, I do well as a number one but I'm actually very good at being a number two and I remember one of the things that I was struggling with was just visibility. I kept thinking, can I just do my thing and nobody bothers with my life? But I remember spending quite a bit of time asking, why am I struggling with visibility? Why am I struggling with media? Why am I struggling with social media? Whatever the case was, there's going to be going on around there. And so learning to name what it is that causes that that feeling is important. Um, but secondly, also just being around communities. And that's why I keep telling people to sign up for LAPID. And I don't know if somebody who's done the program, um, but the 
reason you sign up for programs like LAPID is to allow yourself to expand. I meet very many people who tell me, Esther, when I joined, I was shy. I couldn't talk. I couldn't do XXX. Um, but the thing that we do very well is we are very good at throwing you at deep end and you're also very good at throwing around your support system that kind of holds you through that process. And so understand your why, but also join communities that stretch you. There is no theory that will get you out of that except just going into the deep end. And so just being part of communities and experiences that allow you to stretch beyond that is equally important. And so and there's quite a bit more you can do, but I would say just start with those two. Understand why and extend yourself into a community like Clappy that allows you to stretch yourself, that allows you to understand yourself and engage fully so that then you have an opportunity to be able to um, step out of that fear. Uh, I want to recap what I've said so far because I've said too many things and then move a bit forward. Um, I've talked about that the rebirth is not optional. I've talked about that the rebirth can be painful, but you have the capacity, and that's important, the internal capacity to be able to handle it. And I'll talk about one more thing that enables you to handle it. I've talked about my understanding of rebirth, that it's about maturity and mastery. I've then talked about that mastery is built by one, self-awareness. Before you go to mastery, I've talked about that maturity is the biggest ingredient to rebirth. And maturity allows you to say, I was a child and mourn that process and mourn. You know, I like the people who nowadays say growing up is overrated. It's true. It is overrated everywhere, be it in career, be it in relationships, be it in life, but it is life. No one says, I press pause, God, I want to remain a child. You know, you just keep growing. And when your time is up, God calls you because that's the cycle of life is movement and moving forward and expanding. And so the maturity is the first part. But what maturity then does is it gives birth to um, mastery. And then we talked about mastery involves self-awareness first to be able to tell what are my gaps? What are my areas of I need to grow up? What are my areas of um, strength that I need to celebrate? So that self-awareness is a big part of, of mastery. And then the second thing I talk about when I think about mastery is thinking about productivity. It's thinking about, um, I talk about the T framework. So my time, my energy, my attention, are those things uh, adding value? Um, it's thinking about reverse engineering as a tool that enables you to become more productive and a lot more that it can be able to do to be more productive. But I think the third thing, and, and I want to connect this and perhaps use this to be the last thing that I'll be able to cover in today's webinar, because also I think if we go beyond this, I'm exhausted, but also it won't be very helpful, um, is around purpose and vision. The thing that enables people to reinvent themselves, to go through a rebirth, is one understanding your purpose. And then breaking that down, that purpose into a vision. Now, if I go into purpose, it will take us too long. But it's the reason why a lot of the LAPI programs are built around building purpose-oriented careers. I think one of the gaps, one of the things that we talk about is we go through various eras in life. Um, before, we look at an agrarian revolution, then somewhere along the way, we were hunters and gatherers. So those are all things that have happened within our lifetime. But somewhere along the way, we went to the industrial era. And the industrial era is one of the ones that has impacted our lives the most. Industrial era created these clothes. Industrial era created the makeup or whatever it is. Industrial era created laptops. Well, digital era a bit, but industrial era created tables. Industrial era created a lot of the things that exist today. Political systems, social systems, economic systems are all a fruit of the industrial era. Now, we've been going through a transition to what's called the digital era. And that digital era requires us to go through a rebirth. The kind of thinking that was prevalent in the industrial age is not the kind of thinking you need in a digital era because the realities of a digital era are very different. And so when you think about the digital era, the first thing it was is it's a knowledge era. And it's a knowledge era because everybody has access to knowledge. And you can go to Google, you can go to YouTube, you can go to podcasts. I mean, knowledge becomes a, a free thing that's easily available to everybody. And that's a good thing. A lot of the things, and especially in Africa, that's one of the things that we're benefiting from. And now knowledge is less. I was in a 
community I want to talk about, which one. And we're talking about, I tend to and, and be in a lot of communities where I'm the only African woman, the only African. And I own it nowadays, but I'm saying that I will own those things and I will replicate them. And it's the reason we run the programs that we run, just to figure out how do we replicate the things that are going on in the global space. But I remember in one of the communities that I was in, I kept saying, you guys have created a world where it's a cartel. And maybe so we are extending that, God knows. But it's that though, there's quite a bit of knowledge that's prevalent within um, the West, as an example, that doesn't get to us. And because of that, we tend to be left behind. Um, and there are a lot of other things in between here in that theory. But one of the things that then the digital era does is it collapses things so that we all have access to knowledge that we can be able to move with. And so that's sort of the space that we are in today. Now, the knowledge era then requires people to think very differently. You have access to knowledge, but knowledge alone you quickly realize is useless. And so we're quickly moving towards post-knowledge. And actually, that's not true. It's not useless. But knowledge without the capacity to translate knowledge into action becomes very hard. And so we are moving towards the post-knowledge era. And one of the sort of characteristics of the knowledge era is all of us have access to information, but we don't have the emotional containers to handle that information. And so at the center of a lot of the emotional um, chaos, emotional upheavals today is people have knowledge, but they don't have the awareness of how to deal with that knowledge. The philosophical capacity, the mental capacity to be able to, I hear you, but what does that mean to me? Hasn't been created. And if you ask me, that's one of the, one of the bigger gaps of the current education systems, that they are build around it, the industrial age, they move, they propel philosophies, of the industrial age, they teach people for the industrial age. And because of that, you have a lot of gaps that have to be filled to be able to survive in a post-knowledge era. I have forgotten why I got into that conversation, but one of the bigger characteristics of a post-knowledge era you, is you must be purpose-oriented, purpose-driven. Now, when we did work or build work in the industrial age, the goal was just go and do work, be paid eight to five, go home and retire one day. But as you move towards um, knowledge era, post-knowledge era, you will have more people asking, what is the goal of my work? Why do I do what I do? And so that's the space of purpose. And I remember when I left employment, I left formal employment in 2014, and I don't have a problem with employment. And those ones who can walk into employment easily, uh, it wouldn't bother me. I think employment is actually very necessary. Though, but I remember walking out of employment because I kept feeling I'm just an accountant. And one of the gaps of a lot of workplaces, we don't convert that I am just an accountant into a conversation of, no, you're not just an accountant, into a purpose-driven conversation. And so conversations of purpose and work have to be married together. That allows people to go through rebirth. When I understand my bigger purpose, I am okay with the process. And so purpose is a big part of it, but also purpose must translate into visions. Uh, there are two extremes of people. There are people who don't understand purpose. There are people who understand purpose, but they sit with it and they don't do anything with it. So they have knowledge, but they don't act on it. Uh, I am a believer I mentioned, and I love one of my favorite verses is faith without action is dead. I think that that's a powerful statement. We have a lot of dead things because they are faith driven, but they don't have action. And because of that, you have dead things. Understanding your purpose without putting them into action is dead. And so the action part is very important. And so how do you put things into action? The way you put things into action is you create visions that are action oriented. And what does that look like? I wanna mention a few things, give you guys a homework to go and think through them, give us feedback, and then maybe we'll figure out one day how to do another webinar that expands on that. But a vision one must be specific. If I have a purpose to raise a vision that's specific, it is a nice dream. I tell people, all of us are dreamers. Uh, you just need to sleep and the Lord releases a dream over you. Do not, is the truth of life. 
But the place of a vision is a place where there's a dream and there's an action plan to build that dream. And so for it, for you to have a vision, it must be specific. It must be something that you can be able to ask, did we do it? Did we imagine it? And that's why we moved from reimagine to now we are rebathing. Um, and for that to happen, it must have sufficient detail. Can somebody else read the vision and run with it? Can they be able to tell what's the goal? So for example, for us, we have this ridiculous thing of we must do 15, raise 15,000 young leaders for Africa. That took a long way to go. But that's important because it reminds us that giants are their work. And so making sure that the vision is as specific as possible. Um, um, I was reading an article here that you will allow me to read. Um, and President Kennedy from the US gave an address. And by the way, you can easily have an African here. I'm, I'm a huge fan of African leaders. Ask me which one. But let's read this one. And he talks about before the end of the decade, we will place a man on the moon and return him safely on Earth. Now, that's the kind of leadership you want. That when your political leaders stand, when your social leaders stand, when your pastors stand, when your marketplace leaders stand, they give you specific things that you can measure. So the guy said, before the end of the decade, I could clear, it's not till kingdom comes. We must have placed a person on the moon and return him safely on earth. He did not say we will explore the heavens, we will explore the moons. No, it was a clear direction driven statement. There was a clear intent. By the end of this year, I will be able to give speeches to at least 100 people and use that as a way of building my capacity to teach. By the end of this year, I'll be able to see details in an event and break them down to the team and hold them accountable by doing XXX. So you must make sure that it's very specific. It doesn't say we will explore the heavens. It's a statement of direction. It's a statement of intent. It has enough detail that everyone will know. So that's number one. Make it specific. Number two, make it strategic. And there's a difference between strategic and a strategy. And I don't want to go into too much detail. But the best visions are strategic. And how do you build a strategic vision? You have to do what you guys hear is called a SWOT analysis. And you do your strengths. You do your weaknesses. You do your opportunities. You do your threats. The strengths and weaknesses are internal. The opportunities and threats are external. Now, based on that, you ask, what are my strengths? Convert them into assets. What are my weaknesses? You convert them either into ignore or into possibilities that, of things that you need to work on. What are my opportunities? You convert them into partnerships. And what are my threats? You convert them into action points. And so that's what a strategic vision is. It's, it says we want to exist at some point in the future, and these are our assets. These are the things that we have in place, and this is how we will put them into play. Um, it takes into account your current realities. This is important, and it's the reason why the Stockholm thing of positive and negative are very important. You have to first it with your realities before you dream. My realities are... I cannot only do to it. Let me give you a practical example using Lapid. I remember the first time we did uh, our vision for Lapid and people kept telling me, I said, I like that it's specific, but I can't see the strategic part. I can't see how you're going to get into the 15,000. Now we have a plan uh, for the 15,000 and it's many things that I can get into in this call, but it's to be able to say, how does the vision specific vision translate into a strategic uh, vision. It looks at your current realities. It looks at your constraints. My background is in risk management. And I, when you look at my LinkedIn, how I define myself, is I think about myself as a strategic risk management professional. And it's because at the heart of any vision, there has to be risk management. Risk management says, what are the risks? The risks are that I will get bored with my uh, communication classes. 
I'm using a practical example that I won't go into detail. You name that, you name your realities. And then you ask, what will help me to manage that? I will tell a mentor who will harass me throughout the year. I will um, tell a friend. Like you put processes to manage that risk in place. And so one specific, two is strategic, three is it's lofty. And when you think about lofty, it's something that you cannot do by just closing your eyes and you're out. Um, a vision must be challenging to you. It must be something that if you're like me, unless God helps you, you're lost. So when we started in 2018, I had clarity it was 15,000. When did we do our vision? Actually, it was 2018. I was very clear it was 15,000. It's sometimes still ridiculous even then, even now. But now I have clarity of how we will get into the 15,000. And it's a system that we can be able to put in place. I just need to figure out where the resources will come from. But in terms of the vision, it's lofty. And so the point I'm trying to make here is have a lofty vision. Don't have a vision that you can do uh, because you're yourself or that is easy. So um, my lofty vision is that I will start an organization that will employ people in two years. Please go and share that vision with somebody else so that they also break down the realities. Because I tell people the gift that Kenyans we have is we are creative. Because we are creative, it's not hard for us to do lofty. It comes easy, by the way. But that's why you must marry lofty and it's strategic. So Nimesa, my three things. Uh, and maybe let's fast back there. Rispa, please do a recap. What are you hearing? Okay, so I've actually been writing them in the chat. But what I have heard so far about visions is that number one, it needs to be very, very, very specific. There's a difference between a nice dream and something that can have clarity of direction. And where if someone else was to come and read it, can they carry it forward? Because there's enough specificity for them to tell what you are trying to achieve or you as a person are trying to achieve. The second part of what you have mentioned about visions is that they need to be very strategic in terms of, it's like doing a personal analysis to tell, am I actually able to deliver this vision that I have? Or what do I need to complement? What do I need to ignore? Or what might I need to work on? What can I not afford to have? And that finally your vision must be very lofty that it has capacity to challenge you because otherwise what are you trying if we keep setting goals that are within our reach then we are not really pushing ourselves we are not truly trying and maybe with your permission i'd like to read a few comments from our linkedin um just as i mentioned everyone on linkedin we are very 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 happy to have you our ceo has been tackling the question of rebirth. And I love the, the questions that you're asking here. <clears throat> Can a rebirth at any stage be retrogressive? Um, so that's from Charles, Ma, Charles Mogoba. He's just asking, Can you get so much into rebirth until you end up in a state of regress instead of moving forward? There's also someone else who had asked, um, Okay, this was just on the superpower that they would want is they would want to have a superpower to control the economy because it will improve the value of the currency, create more opportunities for investment and entrepreneurship. That's Beatrice Mbide. Thank you so much, Beatrice. A shout out to all of you that are joining us from LinkedIn. Uh, maybe Esther, we can hear from a few people here. What are you hearing from everything that has been shared? Also, do you have a question that you hope would be answered through this webinar that still hasn't been answered? We would really, really love to hear from you. Uh, maybe Esther, let me read some comments. Your vision needs to be detailed. Have a plan of when you want to achieve it, what may help you reach it, and who are to keep you company in the same. That's from Onyango Emmanuel. He's sharing with all of us. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. I think that is as true as it gets. I think we've all been victims <laughs> at some point of very 
even lofty, even lofty visions or dreams, but because we are not really coming up with strategies of how to achieve it, a plan of how to execute it, we end up recycling our resolutions. You know? I don't know how many people are here and your, your resolutions in 2019, some of them are the same 2020, 2021, now we are in 2023. Some resolutions are the same. So perhaps the question to ask is, okay, in this Rebus webinar, what am I hearing that might help me not recycle my vision or my resolutions again for the year? Um, but thank you. Thank you, Manuel, for sharing that. Someone else, what have you heard from what the presentation that has been made on the second part of our webinar? Feel free to text in the chat. Feel free to also inbox us. Like you can send a question directly to me or to their country to Lapid Leaders Africa, and we'll be able to answer you. But for now, any questions and any thoughts, we would really appreciate hearing from you. But that's a thing. If you ever join Lapid Leaders Africa, you will find this a lot fast. We ask why, <laughs> why a lot. So even if it's something you've had and it stands out for you, but why does it stand out for you? And I have finally come to appreciate why we do that because it's easy once again to consume so much information, just like you shared in, the, in this now digital age, we have the threat of too much information without strategy on how to use that information. How does it work for you? How does it affect you at all, any? So we ask for reflections just as a way for our minds to process what we are hearing and to truly conclude on whether what we are hearing really applies to us or it doesn't apply to us or who in our circles it could apply for. So what are you hearing? And why? Why does it stand out for you? Maybe someone else who's here. With so you could finish this, and then maybe the you could pick two people. I will give you authority to pick two people. As long as they're here, you have the capacity to pick them. Um, you can start okay. with the ones you know, and then pick one person who you don't know. I want to wrap up that part so that we also we start to go towards the end of this. Um, so we've said several things. I keep going back. Mastery, maturity, mastery through self-awareness, mastery through um, productivity, mastery through understanding your vision. And understanding your purpose and vision enables you to build mastery. And we say to build your vision, you have to have specific visions. You must be very strategic. And that um, one of the tools you can use for that is your SWOT, but also coaches, mentors, and able to hear and be able to accelerate what you're hearing. But also the... Um, the lofty visions. And that's the power of imagination. If you don't activate your imagination, I personally think if I could, I would make imagination the biggest thing in all our curriculums. Because if you become imaginative, the possibilities in your life become many. And it's the reason I like the question that you asked about what would you become if you had the power? Because that's activating imagination. And there are specific tools that you can use for activating imagination. One of the ones that we talked about a lot in LAPID is around the future-oriented cognition, that helps you to just learn to think in the future and in the present. And that activates, it builds up your way of thinking. Uh, but imagination is a big part of the lofty. And the last one, and I think Emmanuel alluded to it, is for you to have visions, you must have community behind them. And so vision is communal. And when you think about any vision, there are three levels of community that you need. You need to have people above you, mentors, people who you choose to follow, I use the word choose to follow because it's that choice to follow that allows you to learn from them. Um, there's the current generation struggles with following. You cannot lead if you cannot follow. And so the people who are above you, who you choose to follow, your peers and building a community around that, people who you can do life with, people who think that you're not very weird, because a big part of rebirth is you will have a misfit. And I, I define misfit as the fact that you don't fit anywhere. So I, I consider myself a serious misfit. Um, I left corporate 
because I understand corporate, but I will never fit in corporate. And I run an organization that's very anchored on faith, but I still don't fit in church. My way of thinking is too formal for church. And because of that, I'm a thorough misfit of life. Um, and rebirth often finds people that they cannot fit in old and new spaces. Um, but what I tell people is over time, time brings you people who are yours. They, it brings you your tribe, but you must also make peace with the in-between of misfit. And it speaks to what you were talking about earlier, Rispa. There's no rebirth without that being okay with what can't adjust to the new me has to go. Um, it just has to. Sometimes they catch up in the next, and I've seen that in my own life. I transitioned from corporate and as part of that transition, as part of that rebirth, there's quite a bit that had to be left behind. But when I look at the chapter that I am in in my life, even what was left behind, some of it has caught up. Um, but even what didn't catch up, I have a tribe of people that I understand and they understand me. That takes time. But the point I'm trying to make is communal. Vision is communal. You have people above. Um, you have people who are your peers but also you have people that you're looking after. Community is complete when you have three. Now, many of us think I'm young and I just need to be receiving. If you work with people like me, they would allow you to do such things. You must be receiving and giving. And so community in the form of people you follow, your peers, but also people that you bring up to is important when you think about vision. And so then the last part of them, the rebirth is the choice. And part of the choice is the discipline. You make the choice to do the rebirth because you're still choice driven and the choice of no has its consequences. The choice of yes has its consequences. And then that choice must be backed up by discipline. The discipline to do what is present, the discipline to honor the people that you've chosen to follow, the discipline to honor the actions that you've chosen to do, the discipline to do the hard work. And that recognizes that faith without action is dead. And so those are the things that I want us to think about as we think about rebirth. Um, and I want to pack that conversation for today there and invite you to take some time to ask, what does this whole process mean for me? Um, where am I at? What are the things I need to work towards? And also to invite you guys to be part of the LAPID programs. As Rispa mentioned, we have fantastic programs. And at the start of every year, I have a big headache of revamping our programs. And so right now, I'm spending quite a bit of time in my, the program, one of the bigger programs this year, which we call Crossroads. Crossroads works well with people who have more than four years of experience, work experience, and you feel you're at crossroads. You're trying to figure out what it looks like to have a purpose-driven career in the workplace. Um, many people at Crossroads tend to think, let me go do my master's. When I was at my Crossroads, I was sent to UK on a work secondment, but it never answered the question that I needed answered at that Crossroads. What's my purpose and how do I marry that with the work? Place. And so if you're at crossroads in your workplace, in your life, um, the Crossroads program is for you. It has various aspects that speak to self, that builds the capacity of you to be a manager and a team leader, and ultimately to be a changist in the world. I have borrowed at the name of one of the Obama fellows. They run an organization where they are called themselves changists, and I really like that. Um, but just to wrap up that conversation that ultimately you must make the choice. I want to end there, Rispa, and perhaps take one or two questions or comments um, of what people are hearing, um, what thoughts they have. Um, if you're speaking to words that I'll request that you switch on your camera, just share what are you hearing, what thoughts come through as you do that. And then I'll hand over back to Rispa, who is going to close this in the next uh, few minutes. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Feel free to select people, but I'd like to just invite a volunteer to just share what are you hearing, what does it mean for you, um, and then we can start to wrap up. Thank you so much, Esther, for that. This has been such a powerful evening, and I love that someone else even thought on LinkedIn, so what are your timelines for the vision of creating employment for the 15,000 jobs. Uh, Charles Mogoba 
we our vision is to work with 15,000 young leaders from across Africa. We do not want to create jobs. And perhaps for someone who's here and wondering, okay, so this lab is so some tiny pair job. No, we actually do not give jobs for people just because the point is that you can be so equipped, you can take out whatever space you get to in the marketplace. If we do the program and then also give the job for you, then we should have just gotten you the job and left it at that. The goal yeah. is for you to be ready. The goal is for you to practice. So no, we do not want to create jobs, but perhaps you might be interested in hearing that we have done an impact assessment recently, and it shows that 89% of all people who graduate from Lapid Leaders Africa get a job within the first six months of entering the job employment, uh, the job market, or other have gotten promoted within a year of doing the program so maybe Charles that hopefully answers your question but to clarify we're not creating jobs we want you to be ready for jobs however and in whatever form or shape that job is going to look like for you can I add so, something but, Rispa to that question because I think it's a good yeah. question I find a lot of especially in our context because of the level of unemployment that's significantly higher um I think, and I agree with the concern. I think there are several things. One, I tell, I like, I used to like President Moise, yes, I'm by my um, And so your job is about governance. And so as you think about where is my job, you must ask about your governance processes. How are we holding our governments accountable to the process of creating jobs? Governments create environments that enable people to create jobs. But as young people, we must understand that that when we decide we are not engaging in the politics, we are not showing up for elections, the consequences are that you will reap what you sow. And so there's a governance question that we must connect entrepreneurship with. The jobs are created by governments that create an enabling environment. That's number one. The second thing that I like to talk about when I think about jobs, and it's the reason we run our flagship program, if you talk to a lot of business owners, uh, there's a study that PwC did um, a couple of years ago, and they say 95% of SME leaders and 80% of business owners across the country kept talking about that their biggest challenge in business is lack of the right human capital. Um, and I think that's a tragedy because in effect, what those business owners are saying, and I talk to a lot of business owners, I cannot grow my business because I don't have the talent to be able to grow that business. And so businesses go around in circles, doing small things, remaining small, because they don't have the talent to grow those businesses. And so the question that we ask in Lapid, what does it look like for us to build that talent? And at the heart of that talent, in terms of the gap that those business owners talk about, we want leaders, people who have the capacity to lead themselves, people who have the capacity to be creative, People have the capacity to be proactive and owners of processes within businesses. If you do that, you're creating jobs because you're releasing the business to realize its full capacity. But unfortunately, and again, the study was done and the Inter-University Council of East Africa said this. They said 60, 70% of students who leave universities are said to be half big graduates. What does that mean? Do they have the leadership skills? Do they have the creativity skills? There's no magic in creating jobs. Those jobs have to be created by humans. And that's about how we look after the business environment from a governance perspective. But also it's about the talent. And do we have the talent to grow those businesses? And then lastly, and this is a big part of the program. It's a reason we do entrepreneurship. To ask, what does it look like for us? Uh, this Yesterday, I did quite a bit of coaching sessions. Is it yesterday? Last week, I did coaching sessions with some of our alumni. And my highlight is to hear of people who've started businesses and are hiring people within those businesses. And those businesses then we coach and mentor so that they keep growing, so they're able to hire people. And that's the place of leadership. And so the reason I like your response, Rispa, what we say is if anything is going to change, it's up to us. And that starts with governance and getting the right people in our government offices and holding them accountable. But secondly, it's also asking when I am in business, do I have the skills to be able to grow those businesses? Or am I even supporting the entrepreneurs that need to grow those businesses? Mm -hmm. So there's no magic. And even anybody tells you that they will do magic, they will lie. It's just that us, we don't know how to do that lie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
thank you for that response. Uh, you know, I'm smiling because of late the stories that have been running Twitter and the newspapers in Kenya have been. Oh, Nairofari, you know, like someone has been robbed here. Someone was promised a quick, a quick way to earn either whether it's money or it's real estate or mm -hmm. it's investment. There have been a lot of stories of people have been scammed and, and repeated scamming, almost the same procedure, and yet people don't seem to learn. And you know, I was just thinking, if I were Esther and thinking about this, you would just say we are so used to the quick fails for ah, I'm going to fix you everything all at once. But in truth, I don't think that's going to be happening. We better make peace with the fact that it will not be happening. There's no magic to how we change. There's no magic to even how to see myself as not small. Probably there's the work that I need to do, the help that I need to get along that process. Um, so I think that's just to add on to what you have said indeed. There's no, my Shambaya, hey, people, be reborn. <laughs> Maybe this is the time to reverse people who have been afraid of stepping into government spaces. And maybe you feel so small or you feel that perhaps what you have to say will not make sense. It has to start somewhere. So maybe start. Um, allow me to read a few takeouts that have been shared in the chat. One is from Betty. This is, as I was saying, this is probably a Betty that I know as a desk mate in high school and friends way after that. Thank you for this. I am challenged to take a good look at my life and see where I need to evolve and take action on that. Indeed, that's the thing that you need to take. I think it's a process of we need to take time to be able to really learn. So where do I need to evolve? But we really appreciate your comments, Betty. Thank you. Nawira shares that if it is to be, it is up to me. True. No one is coming. What? You've said, Esther, you have said that so many times. No one is coming until it has just become a constitution. I just should write it somewhere in my house. Whisper, no one is, com no one is coming to wake you up. No one is coming to make your alarm not snooze. <laughs> no one is coming to do anything for us except we show up. Uh, Fabiola shares, I find this webinar very eye-opening. I'm learning that I need to challenge myself and expand when joining such programs like Clapid Leaders Africa. Many thanks for this webinar. Thank you so much, Fabiola. We appreciate hearing your feedback. And indeed, the Lapid Leaders Africa programs are open for you. We had already shared the link for our flagship program, and we will be resharing it again with you just for your information. But yes, you are welcome to our programs, I think. It has been, if it's not been clear by now, let's just clarify it. We are very, very intentional about what we do. LAPID is more holistic than any program that you will go into because it starts at investing in the person. And I think Esther has made that clear from her presentation as well, that it's not going to happen if the person themselves first isn't worked on. Um, so I'd like to, close the comments uh, here, just so that we can hear from at least two people from the, uh, from the audience that we have today. Dante Boychild. Uh, Dante Boychild, that's a very interesting name. What have you heard from this webinar? Um, maybe my colleague can help unmute you, but we would love to hear from you, Dante Boychild. What have you heard from this webinar? And then we'll hear from one more person. I think I'll pick a girl, Emily Gitao. We can hear from Emily Gitao and Dante Boychard, then we close. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, so for me, this has been quite an eye opener because uh, currently I'm in a phase where I'm transitioning in, into the career space because I finished school. So for me, I feel like this is one of those, you know, stepping stones that you really need to charge yourself up to go into the market. Therefore, I look forward to, you know, more engagements and 
join the programs that really do fit my, you know, a need and I'll be good to go. So thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome to join Lapid Leaders Africa, just for the record, you know. Um, Emily Gitau, if you can hear us, we would really love to hear what you've gotten from this webinar and then we can proceed from there. So good evening, everyone. Mm. Good evening, good evening to you, Emily. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Esther for this presentation on Rebirth. Uh, what I'm hearing, having been a member of the Lapid community, uh, the aspect of community always remains with me, that your vision always needs a community and you need to have people close to you who understand where you're going and what you're doing. And the second thing that has really resounded with me is about us making the choice to change. Uh, rebirth comes with embracing change. And if change was easy, everyone would be doing it. And therefore, you need to be disciplined to follow through in whatever you make the choice to do. I think for me, that's all. And I'd like to encourage everyone who wants to join LAPID to be able to join the program and to be able to benefit from it. Thank you. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Emily. At least that one, we don't have to force it. That's someone who's gone through the program and completely knows that there is value, a lot of value in joining uh, our program. Maybe one last person I'd like to hear from just because she has been here throughout a lot. TTW, Kanye, what are your thoughts from this webinar? If you can hear us, we would really love to hear okay um dante boy Charles is my brother i see that from nawira thank you for inviting your entire like family here <laughs> okay i don't know if that's your entire family but we are really happy to have you so i think ttw kani might not be here so I'm going to request um, Calvin says Odiambo to close the session for us with a prayer. But perhaps before Calvin's prayers, um, first I wish to thank all of us, all, all of us who've been present and who have left and who are still here. It is such an honor to have been hosting you for our first rebirth webinar of the year. I have been your host. My name is Rispa Wanja. I'm working as a growth associate at Lapid Leaders Africa. We would truly, truly, truly love to have you in our program. So we have shared the links for those who are interested in either applying to Crossroads or to our flagship program. The links have been shared. And you can also find them on all our social media platforms and on our websites, which had also been shared here. I would also like to thank anyone who did referrals, uh, like Nawire, you know, we can now see that people have joined out of you having referred them. I think especially for such free uh, episodes and webinars, we would love to have as many people as possible, just because the kind of content you interact with is what people are likely to be charging. Uh, for you to get access to. So when we are doing the next installment of this webinar, maybe we will do on change management just because it has come across. Uh, so keep out uh, an eye for emails that we are going to be sending you on our future webinars. But for now, I wish to thank you so, so, so much. Um, Calvin, you can indicate with an emoji if you're ready. Um, but maybe perhaps I can read one last uh, comment from Ilya K to everyone. A very healthy initiative. Thank you, Lapid family, for everything. We shall engage more. Many Africa initiatives have been affected by geopolitical influences and in business as well. Um, how is Lapid leaders initiatives ready to protect African, young African leaders from to okay to protect them from poverty huh? 
to protect African young leaders from these influences. Ah, I love, I love your reflection and sort of question, Ilya. What I would encourage you, just because our time for this webinar is over, keep an eye for future webinars. Uh, we are going to have another one by the end of the month. We would love to have at least one per month. So keep that in the eye. If you would like to suggest any topic you'd like us to cover just around the webinars that we are having, primarily they'll be on rebirth. So anything surrounding rebirth, feel free to also inbox us and talk to us because we would really, really love to do that with you guys and benefit all of us. With that, I wish to thank finally, 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 our guest for the day, Esther Moniki. We really appreciate your time and the fact that you keep giving a lot of who you are. And I hope that, and I believe that actually this will be bearing fruit and I can't wait to see, you know, us execute the 15,000 and even more for this continent. And just to prove, you know what, it's doable. Our vision is very specific, so why should it not happen? Um, I don't know if you have any final remarks, but Calvin is ready to- Thank you, Rispa. Us. Thank you everybody for taking the time to join in. Um, I wish you all the best as you go through your own rebirth. Um, I hope that you will be able to put up a vision as you start this year and make sure that it's specific, make sure that it's strategic, make sure that it's lofty, and ultimately make sure that you have a community around you that enables you to build up on that vision. That's what's going to enable you to be able to have a rebirth. Um, it's not the conversations, it's the actual action that you take to be able to build up on the things that you have seen. Uh, that's going to be more useful than anything else. So thank you, Rispa. Um, I wish you all the best. I've gone through several rebirths. I have become, I, I remember that somebody who asked, can a rebirth become harmful? Um, I think it can. I think anything can become harmful. You just know the quote of too much of anything is harmful. Um, and, and for me, one of the ways that I protect myself is um, through my faith and praying a lot about the things that I engage in and making sure that then they are anchored on a foundation that's uh, significantly um, able to handle the things that I see, but also having people around you. Um, there's a quote that I like that uh, Isaac Newton used to say, if I've seen far, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of great giants. And so have giants around you because if you want to see far, the giants can be able to tell there, hmm, there, there is a ditch, avoid it. And so standing on the shoulders of great giants is a philosophy that I live by. Thank you, Rispa. Um, I wish you all a good night. All right. Thank you so much, Esther. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in until this last minute. Narira, please close for us with our word of prayer. Okay. And Nawire, if you can hear me, you can close this for us. 30 seconds. All right. So let's as believers we pray heavenly father we come before you we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for everything that you have done we thank you for the session that has been lord we also thank you for our guest speaker lord how i pray that you may continue expanding her territories lord each and every person that was here king of all glory even though they have left, how I pray that whatever we have had, King of all glory, may be of benefit to our lives and it may create an impact in our lives, Lord. As we depart, may you protect each and every individual here, be with us, and all the glory and honor shall be back unto you. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we do pray as we believe. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for the guys that have joined us from LinkedIn. You are now free to leave at your own pleasure. Our host will be closing this meeting room in one minute. Thank you so much, everyone. We hope to see you in the next installment of this Rebirth webinars. Keep out an eye for the email inviting you. If you have any thoughts on topics, you would want to cover specifically, also let us know. We see if it's something we can do or it's something we are considering. All right. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you, Kanye. Uh, thank you, Betty. Thank you.
Frida, Chebet Valen, everyone that has attended, we really appreciate you. My colleague Frank, you can close the meeting room for everyone now. Yeah.